There is so much to learn about copper plate, so I decided to make a video to explain some of the basics um, so I can show you how I learned and um, hopefully give you some advice of how to get started yourself. So a couple months ago, Jillian took a class and learned how to do this. Um, it was an in-person class. She learned the style of calligraphy and then taught me how to do it. And then I've also been learning from a lot of people on Instagram and Periscope. Um, a lot of people that have blogs and videos of how-tos. So the first thing that you need to know is um, getting familiar with the pen. This is uh, called an oblique pen holder and you can see that it has this flange with a what's called a nib that's at an angle. Um, here's this is what a nib looks like up close and the way it works is um, in the style of calligraphy you change the thickness of uh, within the letters so there are really thin hairline strokes and there are thick um, shaded strokes and so just to show you how a nib works there are two tines that come together at a point so when you're writing th thin strokes it's just the point of the pen making a hairline but then once you apply pressure the tines separate and that allows you to draw thicker strokes so as you're writing you vary the pressure that you're applying and that varies the thickness of the stroke. <coughs> so this type of pen you dip in ink and I have this um, this large bottle of ink but I just pour it into this smaller little container and um, so this nib is in my holder and when you dip the pen and the ink, you have to fill it past that hole so that the hole is covered with ink. So you just dip it in and now you can see that the hole is covered. You have to dip it in periodically when you're writing once it starts running out. So like I was saying, if you're not applying any pressure, it's just a hairline, really thin strokes. And you can write in any direction, up, down. Um, and then once you apply pressure, so I'm pushing down on the pen, that creates a thick stroke. And different nibs have different levels of flexibility. So here you can see I'm starting to run out of ink, but as I'm varying the pressure, it's varying the thickness of the line. So that's how it works and that's how you're able to get varying thicknesses. <coughs> so copper, this is called a pointed pen and the style of calligraphy is called copper plate, um, sometimes called engrosser's script. And there are a few basic rules. So a lot of people use these guide sheets and uh, the angle of these lines is 55 degrees compared to this straight line. So I put this under my paper when I'm writing. And some other rules are the ratio of letters. So I'm just gonna... So if this is your baseline, everything is based off of the baseline. This is the bottom of most of the lowercase letters. So this is the x height. Um, this is called the baseline. This is called the header line. And then you have your first ascender and your second ascender. Then you have your first descender and your second descender. So this is the ratio that a lot of people use for copper plate. Um, and I'll show you some of the basic strokes. 
So everything in this style is just a combination of very basic strokes. <coughs> the first one is, oh, you can also see that these guidelines, this is at 55 degree angle. So there are several basic strokes. The first one is called an entrance stroke. And it just looks like that. There's an underturn. Overturn. Compound curve, which is a combination. It's basically this one and then this one combined. An oval. An ascending stem loop. And a descending stem, stem loop. So this will help you see some of the basic rules of copper plate. You can see that all of these strokes have, if they have a shaded part, so all of them except the entrance stroke, the shaded part is parallel to the 55 degree angle on all of these strokes. So anywhere there's a shade, anywhere that you're applying pressure, it's always parallel to the guidelines. And that's why it's helpful to have these lines in the background. <coughs> um, something else to note is the ratio. So these strokes, they all touch the baseline at the bottom and the header line at the top. And then these stem loops, the ascending and descending, <coughs> they are the height is basically three times the height as the x height, so one, two, three. And that's the ratio to keep in mind for that. Um, so once you learn these basic strokes, a lot of people do drills with these. So I just got a new nib that's a little bit more flexible than the one I had been using. So I've been doing some drills and the goal is to aim for consistency in thickness and in uh, in stroke thickness for the shades and then also in the spacing of the strokes so for example whoops it's still wet the distance in this letter from here to here or in this stroke from here to here is the same it should be the same as the distance in the spacing in here spacing in here and here and this spacing, as well as the width of this oval. So if you were to draw a bunch of ovals next to each other, it should be touching. You should be able to fit these strokes. So not only the oval stroke, but also the underturn, the overturn. I'm sorry, that was the overturn, and this is the underturn. The compound curve should fit within these ovals too. So these are just some drills that help practice consistency in spacing. <coughs> um, something else to note is that, and this is a really, um, <laughs> this is a close detail, but 
If you notice at the bottom of my overturns, where it touches the baseline is squared along the bottom, so it's flat, straight line. And then the tops of these underturns are also supposed to be flat. And there are different ways to do that. Um, this is just a detail that you can work on, but when you press down and spread the tines, if you're starting with an underturn, you should flex the tines so that they create a straight line along the header line. And that, that takes some getting used to once you have been working with your nib for a while. Or when you're coming down and you release, it should create a square bottom. So the way you can do that is by of this you'll be able to see. So I'm going to keep the left tine in place and I'm going to close the right tine towards the left. Try that again. And then at the top, I'm going to try to keep the right tine in place and move the left one over like that to square the top and then move the right one to the left to square the bottom. Again, that's just a detail that you can look for. So, <coughs> all of the lowercase letters, otherwise, or other, um, also known, known as minuscules, are just a combination of these basic strokes. So, for instance, the letter A, pretty much every letter starts with an entrance stroke. Oh, and I forgot to mention. So all of the shades on these strokes are parallel to the 55 degree angle. For this entrance stroke, once you get to about the top third of the stroke, that should be parallel to the slant also. And same with the hairline section of these other strokes. The top third of this one, the bottom third of this one, same with here, you can see this is 55 degrees, this is 55 degrees. <coughs> so back to the letter A. It starts off with an entrance stroke. And then you have an oval. And then an underturn. <coughs> so when I drew the entrance stroke here, I showed it going from the baseline up to the header line. But there's another um, rule, I guess, where if you're connecting an entrance stroke to an oval, you don't have to go all the way up. So if I did go all the way up, and then I started drawing the oval so that it, the oval met the entrance stroke at the shade, there's this extra piece of that line. So if you're connecting an entrance stroke to an oval, you can stop at about halfway or two-thirds of the way up. So I would do it more like this. <laughs> um, if we look at the letter B, it's a combination of an entrance stroke, and I'm going to go all the way up to the header line. And then this ascending stem loop, once you get to, so you draw this loop, and once you get to here, then you start thinking about drawing an underturn. So 
So now I'm going to draw an underturn. And then the last stroke is this little, I've heard it called an eyelid before. It's just a little stroke that looks like this, which is not one of our main strokes, but it's the bottom section of this stroke. So if you drew just the bottom part of it, that's what this is. If you continued it, it would be the shape of an oval. So that's B. <coughs> um, C also has an entrance stroke, and then you're gonna draw a section of this oval. So starting at the top here, which is where you would start an oval normally, go around, and then once you get here, you continue straight up instead of continuing the oval shape. So I could keep going around to do an oval, but I'm going to go up. And then to finish the C, you come around here and just draw a little dot. I'll just do a couple more letters. So D, another entrance stroke connecting to an oval, so I'm going to stop halfway. I'm gonna move over far enough because I know that all these letters or all these strokes are slanted. So if I were to start the oval here, it would overlap this stroke. So I want to move over. Um, for the D, <coughs> so here's the ratio of lines. So for stem loops, you go all the way up to almost touching the second, or I guess third line, the first, the second ascender. For a D, you go up to the first ascender. So only one space above it. And when you're figuring out where to place the beginning of your stroke, usually I imagine a dotted line parallel to the 55 degree angle. So I draw this, I draw the oval, and then I follow a line up. I move over just a tiny bit to here. Then I apply pressure and go straight down along the slant. Once I get here, I start releasing pressure. And by the time you get to the baseline, it should be a hairline. And then you have another entrance stroke, which is also an ed exit stroke same um, shape. So once you know the strokes and once you kind of know how they go together, it's pretty easy to guess how to make the rest of the letters. So E would be the same as C. Except instead of making a little dot, you just come around and connect it. There's different ways to make F, so you start the same way, entrance stroke, ascending stem loop, and some people just end it like that. So you can see in this ascending stem loop, it's a hairline, 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 and then I start applying pressure once I am in line with this 55 degrees. So it's still curving here, so I'm not applying any pressure, but once I get to be parallel with 55 is when I start applying pressure and then I end it at the bottom with a squared bottom. You can see a lot of them are starting off the same way, an entrance stroke and an oval. Now this one has a descending stem loop. And you always after every single stroke you make, you always want to lift. So then this ends with an exit stroke. I'll show you on H what would happen. Well, I guess I'll just do a G again. So if I did these strokes and then... Oops. Hold on. So if I made this descending stem loop and then I went around and I... If I don't lift right here and I just go straight through... 
because this ink is still really wet and it's like a blob of ink when you drag it through it likes to drag the ink with it so sometimes it creates a big blob like that rather than here if you leave a tiny bit of space then it's a nice hairline So an H is entrance, ascending stem loop, and then this compound curve. An I is an entrance stroke, an underturn. And then the dot you draw, if, if this is the next two spaces, you just draw it halfway in between and try to make it the same width as the shade. There's a couple of different ways to write K's. So right here you can either make a little loop like that, and this is kind of like the end of a compound curve. So like this section of the compound curve. That's the way I usually make it. Um, I guess I'll just finish the alphabet. So right there, I should have moved over a little bit. You see how this entrance stroke ends within this shade? I should have gone like this and started the shade so it meets with the top of the entrance stroke here rather than down here. An M is an overturn, another overturn, and then a compound curve. N is the same except just one overturn, compound curve. <coughs> o is an entrance stroke to an oval, and then this little eyelet thing. There's different ways to write P's. I've seen it written like that, but I usually write it like this. I'm gonna draw a hairline up and around. is this a descending stem loop except the loop goes the opposite way. Uh, there's different ways to write R. Um, one way is like this, an overturn, straight line going slightly above this header line, and then an eyelid. Or this is how I usually write it entrance stroke with a little loop here that you can fill in. Angle slightly down and then an underturn. An S is an entrance stroke and then the same little loop thing. And then this, the rest of the letter is as if you were finishing an oval, and then you can make a little dot there. So if this was an oval right here, it would be the right half of it. T goes up to the first ascender.
and again you don't want to drag through otherwise it would drag the ink with it <coughs> the spacing should be more consistent V is a compound curve. Oops, that's a little bit wide here. A W is the same as a U, except it also has this little piece. X's are pretty hard to write. Basically, it's an upside down C and then a normal C. So the upside down C looks like that. And then you draw another C with no shade. Like that. A Y. Is a compound curve with a descending stem loop and a Y is exactly the same as an upside down H. And lastly Z, I've seen this written a few ways. Um, I don't know if that's exactly right, that's not how I usually write it. I've done it like this, where I basically do an overturn that curves in, so kind of like the same start of the X, and then a little loop, and then a loop at the bottom. So that's the whole alphabet in minuscules. Um, I just started learning how to write capital letters. So I'm not too great at those yet, but a lot of them have um, similar strokes to each other. For example, this is just a large compound curve. So th this is the beginning of a lot of capital letters, such as capital B. Or if you did an R or P. So I'm still learning those. But something that you can notice is all of these letters are just made up of ovals, even these capital letters. You can see there's an oval here, here, here. So that's what makes it look consistent. Um, so yeah, I guess I wasn't planning on writing out the whole alphabet, but I did. <laughs> so that's basically it for copper plate. Once you learn the basic strokes and you realize that all it is is connecting them together, <coughs> it makes it a little bit easier. Um, something else I've been working on is brush pen calligraphy which sometimes, oops, um, a lot of people use this for a modern style, but I'll just show you some basics of this. Once you learn copper plate, which I learned copper plate first, then a lot of the, a lot of it's the same. So this is a brush pen. It has a very flexible tip. So if you don't apply a lot of pressure, you can make thin, very thin lines. And then once you apply pressure, it's thick lines. So same as this, same as how this pen works. So the general rule is just anytime you make an upstroke, it's thin. Anytime you make a downstroke, it's thick. And it's almost harder to make thin lines with this type of pen, in my opinion. Because you have to be more steady. 
So you can apply the same basic strokes to brush pens. I'm not really I'm not really going off these. These dots are for guidelines, but I wasn't really going off of those. <coughs> so I hope that was helpful. Um, there's a lot of really good resources online. There is um, a girl named Nina. Actually, I think her website is. And in Tran. And she has a lot of um, links to where you can buy this pen holder, different types of nibs. There's a lot of different types of nibs. For a beginner, I would go some, with something a little bit less flexible because I just switched to this one that's really flexible and sometimes it's harder to control because if you don't want it, the letter to be as thick as what you would put down with normal pressure, you have to, it's, it's just harder to be consistent. So I would check out her blog. She has a lot of good information if you are looking for more advice or where to buy this type of pen and ink. Um, yeah, so I hope that was helpful, and let me know if you have any questions, and um, good luck.